I'll show you about GitHub. It's <laughs> great. Now I'm getting paid just to hang out. <laughs> So, as he's been showing you, you've got a lot of he's got a lot of code all over GitHub. I've got a lot of code all over GitHub too, actually. Um, so, and putting your code on GitHub is a good thing too because you can get job offers that way. Some people will look at your GitHub and see, oh, he's made this much code, or she's made this much code in this language that we use a lot. Let's send him an email. So, and then. It's a good way too because GitHub keeps track of history. If I uh, pull open his this going web of uh, Todd's here, see he's got two commits. I can actually go back to three hours ago when all he had was this one file. <laughs> <laughs> so, or there may be many. If I, uh, I'm pretty sure I've got a few uh, repos where I've got like 30 commits. There's me, and uh, let's see, where's one where I've got a lot of, a lot of commits here? It's like 100, 177 commits oh, yeah. here. I mean, I can go back. Like, what did I do? And the people who are with me in this repo, what did I do? we do for this entire repo? 133 updates. And this can get hilarious, too, when you're committing late hours, it's 3 o'clock, you're exhausted, and the typos are everywhere. It's great to read <laughs> afterwards. Some of these commit messages, yes. Yeah, where's, uh, I think there's one, like, right here. Um, no one move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, being able to see the history of your code, too, can sometimes be useful when you're tracking down bugs. You can say, oh, let's go back to this version of my code and see if this bug still exists. Yes, the bug still exists. Okay, that means I don't have to worry about all the code I wrote after this point. Just go back further. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure how to search for your uh, terminal, Todd. Oh, there command. it is. There you go. Okay. So, and then, uh, what about opening? Do you have Git, Do you have GitHub Desktop on here? I, I do. Just command spacebar brings up something called Spotlight on okay. the Mac, and you can just type in Git Desktop. There you go. So uh, if you go to GitHub.com, you'll sign up for an account, and they've got. If you search for it, I think they've got this hidden, but they've got this GitHub Desktop program that you can download. That uh, gives you every. This is for Windows and Mac only. It doesn't actually work for Unix people. But uh, this will deal with a lot of your issues for you. You tell it about your repo here on the left with this with the plus. You just say create a repo. Uh, you can hit clone, which you and you give it the uh, one, and it'll see all your code on GitHub, and it'll just download it to your computer. Create will create a new repo. Uh, if you already got a Git repo, some for some reason, you can add it to the GitHub thing there, and then after that, it'll be over here. And uh, you can see all the commits in the middle, and uh, what what changed in this particular commit. It's like see on this commit here, he changed he he removed the s and changed the last couple of digits here, removed the print line there, etc. Mouse feels kind of odd. Yeah. So. It's always funny getting on somebody else's machine. Huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you in in the GitHub desktop, it will track if you've changed a file. You go into your file, you change a few lines. It'll pop open a little window down here that asks you, and it'll say, we've got some changes. Do you want to put a message in? Type in your little commit message, which is just like a couple words here. As you can see by his commit thing, there's usually no more than like five or six words. Just a basic like summary of what, you, what did you change. So adjusted code for readability here to make it more readable. I mean, you don't have to be... Any, uh, it doesn't have to be like super complicated or detailed. Just some, a basic summary: what changed. So you can look back at it later and see. Um, and then you hit, com and then there will be a button. You type in your message, you hit commit. It'll add it to this list. And then you just hit sync, and it'll be on GitHub.com. So uh, for uh, the Unix users, the uh, command line is uh, a bit more complicated. Comfortable with it before long. Yes. So if you uh, if you go to uh, well Unix users, you can find it get in your standard uh, uh, way of getting files uh, uh, app dash get or whatever. 
Pac-Man, whatever your uh, get whatever your uh, Linux repo uses for getting uh, programming stuff gets in there. So for git command line, you just type git, and there's a whole bunch of help. But usually, what you're going to do is you're going to go git in it the first time you're adding anything, you're you creating repo. Go to, go to a different repo. Yeah, I'm go not going to actually I'm not going to actually enter anything. <laughs> so first time when you first create a play, you, you create your folder that you're going to put your code in. You type git in it. That'll basically git will create its private files that it needs to run in your folder. Show them. Go up a level. Make them endure. Yeah, there you go. You can do it right there. Now you can init that, yeah. So git init. Boom. Initialize empty repository here. See, it's still empty. If I show uh, hidden folders, it's got a, got a hidden .git folder. That, uh, so that's git will deal with that. You don't have to ever look in there. Leave it alone. You don't want to mess anything up. So once you got this, you, got, you can put some files in if you want. Um, C++. So create a file, test.cpp. If you hit git status, it says, oh look, untracked files. Use git add file to include in what will be committed. So I say git add test.cpp. Or more likely, just say dot and that'll be everything in the current folder and below. So git add, so let's look git status. Files to be committed. Use git remove cache to, to unstage. So if you don't want it to be in your commit, you can use that command. But once you've got that though, you say git commit dash m and you give it your commit message. So added a file. Oops. That's a closing quote. So git status says there's nothing to commit. Working directory clean. This is it's the cur the, full, the git thinks that nothing has changed since last time it had a commit. Which is true. I just committed it. So if you do one thing with that. Be wary if you're working with other people, mm -hmm. because that is your local status. If the master yes. of the uh, origin. Yes. This is this is just you on your own computer. Nothing's changed on your computer. It doesn't check GitHub yet. So if you do Git log, you can see your previous repo, your any commits that previously happened. So you can see you added a file. So you can. So if you got 133 commits, that's you can look through them with git log. When you're ready, you would uh, type git push, and that'll put it up to GitHub. Once you've got that set up, when you first, if you're using the command line, it doesn't automatically know that you want to go to GitHub. There's many Git websites out there, GitHub, GitLab. Um, you can have your own one on your own personal server. So, uh, oops, no. <laughs> You can create a new repo on my uh, so, GitHub account. Yeah, what you do test one. Yeah, so what you do is you, you so when you want it to be on GitHub, you go to GitHub, you'd hit create new repository on your account, you give it a name, <laughs> optional description, whether it's public or private. Uh, if you go looking around, I think you're allowed five private repos as a student if you uh, can activate the education pack. Uh, but otherwise, if you don't bother with that, everything has to be public. Um you just hit create repo, and uh, since there's nothing in here, it'll actually give you the commands here. So push an existing repository from the command line. Here's the commands. So you you type in the first one, which is really big, but that basically tells Git that whenever you say origin, you mean this website. And then this next one, git push dash u origin master. What this does is git push. Push means send your repo, send a copy of your repo somewhere else. So you want to send this to GitHub. And then, and then what you're doing is you're sending master, which is your local code, your master copy on your computer, and you're sending it over to origin, which is this URL that you saved before. And the dash u basically means you're going to save this as your default. So after you type this once, it runs. It's pushing. Okay, pushed. From now on, all I have to do is type <laughs> git push. It won't require me to uh, do the dash u or any of that other stuff. You just say dash, you just say git push. It'll does do it. If I go back over here and refresh the page, see you got test.cpp here. Cool. So th those are the basic git commands. Uh, yeah. 
going to say, um, from my understanding, uh, codeacademy.com recently put in uh, learning a Git handler. So for those that yeah. are not familiar with Git using the command line, take a look at that. Yes, there, Git Code Academy's got a Git thing. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of places that got them. I know Linda's got, Linda.com's got one. There's, there's a lot of places to learn Git. Um, I prefer I uh, prefer actually git dash scm dot com. Uh, <laughs> so git scm is uh, if you want to get on your Windows or Mac without having git desktop, this is the place to download it. Um, but then it's got where is it? Try git here, which is actually a GitHub thing, I think. Try. Which will actually is a is an interactive tutorial. So like here, it's saying teaching you get in it. So you type get in it. Does it success? And now it's got some new text. Git status. And this will actually just step you through all the various Git commands using GitHub if you want to learn it. So this is try.github.io. Cool. Um, so specifically to commenting errors, don't worry, you will make mistakes, it will not destroy everything. GitHub is really understanding if you do so. Did you mean this? Blame? There's a git blame command. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you can blame this person for the bad code. <laughs> you really have to try to get Git through the command line to break anything. And even if you do, there are very simple steps to roll it back to a, uh, to a time in which it was working. There's a lot of really good documentation online, and you won't get lost. Eventually, it'll become second nature. I was a Windows user that was forced to suddenly move into Ubuntu. And suddenly, you know, all the programs that I'd grown accustomed to were gone. And I was left with a lot of command line options that I really wasn't comfortable using Git being one of them. But you get comfortable with it really, really quickly as you're using it day in and day out. Yeah, and you just saw 97%. Like instead of the 80-20 rule, it's like the 97-3 rule. Like that's, you know, that's what you just saw is what you'll use 97% of the time. <clears throat> So yeah, if you're a Windows user or Mac user, the Git desktop is simple and easy to use. Unix users have to use the terminal, but then it's probably a good idea to be familiar, at the very least, with the terminal commands anyway uh, for any job prospects and such. The GUIs are nice and all, but uh, a lot of programming tools are command line, so being familiar with the command line is important. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. So, uh, Daniel, Aaron, Shen, Alan, do you guys have anything you want to chime in on on this first day together? Do you have anything more like you want to show them anything? Or... So if you guys come up with anything, you know, uh, you're more than welcome to present in this class. You can just send me an email and say, hey, I want to show them about this, and then you can stand up there and teach us something. Because many minds are better, and you guys definitely know stuff I don't know. So.